I'm Crystal Moore from Doctor Who Velocity. Uh, episode 4 is coming out very soon in July. And it is now time for The Legend of the Traveling TARDIS. My name is Christian Basil. Years ago, I had an idea. I got myself a TARDIS. Took it to new places, met a lot of new people, took some great pictures, and talked Doctor Who. From Krypton Radio and the creators of the Hanging With Web Show, this is the legend of the traveling TARDIS. Join me on my latest adventures and become part of the legend. And hello once again, fellow Whovians, back to the Legend of the Traveling TARDIS radio show. I am your host and steerer of this TARDIS. My name is Christian Basil, and we have some doctors to go over on today's panel today, and we have a very special guest who she is in her own right, not only one of my favorite female doctors, but she was the doctor before Jody. So I love uh, I, I love the series um, we call Doctor Who Velocity. you won't got to check it out sometime. But first, we're going to talk to... Uh, our, our favorite doctor, but let me introduce you to one of our doctors, and I think I'm confusing myself just trying to do this introduction alone. So, starting out with anybody, we have Mr. Brian Barras. You know him on YouTube as Dr. Freedom. How you doing, Brian? Hanging in there. How's everybody doing today? Good, 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 yeah. good, good. <laughs> and we also have Kinsey Floor. You know her as author of The Right of Wands. you got to check out her book and check out her site and check out her material. Hi, Mackenzie. How you doing? Hello. Well, I just got... Finished filming actually an episode today on Channel 18. So I'm now part really? of the team. Yeah, gonna do an I've, interview. <laughs> I've actually been invited to another Doctor Who show, Doctor New Podcast, and I'll make an announcement once we do the recording. But I've been invited, and the topic is River Song. Ooh. And I'm like, you really want me to bring it? <laughs> you want to bring me in on this? Okay, cool. Let's do this because I'll yeah. talk hours of Doctor Who there. And this woman is going to be your new favorite doctor, whether you like it or not. This is Miss Crystal Moore. You will also know her better as, for some of you who, uh, well, you know what, Crystal, talk about yourself and Doctor Who Velocity. Uh, hello. Thank you. It's a pleasure to meet most of you. Uh, I, I see meet because I've already met Christian, so it's uh, good to know all of you and a pleasure to just now meet the rest of you. Um, I, I realized that was going to come off. Uh, not sound. That's okay. Bad. I gave you a bad introduction, so I feel bad. I like, how am I going to introduce that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, Doctor Who Velocity is a, a little web series, a short web series that my my partner Chris and I make um, right here uh, in our home uh, in in Idaho. Um, Almost entirely by ourselves. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of really great, uh, talented people here that, that lend their time freely and, and I love and appreciate them for it. And, uh, without that, I certainly wouldn't have quite as cool a product, uh, at the end of this wild and ridiculous dream I had one time. <laughs> Well, for folks who have not heard of Doctor Who Velocity or may not be familiar with Crystal's work, you're going to learn today, and I think you're going to be a big fan by the time this show is over. I'm definitely going to be checking out her work on Doctor Who Velocity. But first, as we always do, before we get into our uh, go any further, we're going to talk about the Who New News with Sage Ia. Sage, give me some news. I have wow. the best news to start out with. Okay. Are you guys ready for that? I found this Challenge article accepted. online. And it says, Who North America has announced a handmade craft showcase Saturday, June 15th, and award-winning author Mackenzie Floor is set to attend, signing her books. I don't know who you're talking about. I like that apple. <laughs> who dat? Isn't that fantastic? Are you excited, Mackenzie? Oh, yeah, absolutely. They got a October class that's coming in October also, which is really cool. They were only going to allow people that had like licensed stuff from Doctor Who, but then they're like, "Well, you're allowed in because your book is associated with Matt Smith, so you're allowed in." I'm like, "Okay, cool." <laughs> okay. 
So that yeah, is it's fantastic. code word Matt Smith. Mackenzie, well, Mackenzie, how are you getting prepped up for this? Are you going to cosplay, or what are you going to do to get all prepped up for this moment? Oh, of course. I have to do cosplay, because any time I do a signing, I always dress as the Eleventh Doctor, because I have found that over the three mm-hmm. years of trying to do various signings, that if I don't dress as Eleven, then I don't do really good sales. I just tried doing that theory at Motor City, and I ended up having a, uh, all three days I dressed as Eleven and had best sale record, so that was pretty cool. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a good omen. Well, congratulations, Mackenzie. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Speaking of good omens, that was recently uh, released oh, on Amazon. I see what you did there. Right? Yeah. Did you see that was good, right? And there are some Doctor Who Easter eggs if anybody has had a chance to watch. Now, I don't want to give away too many spoilers, and they really shouldn't be. Um, but the first reference to the Hooniverse uh, came from a license plate because it said Sidrat, which we all know is TARDIS spelled backward, which appeared... You know, it's in the Doctor Who mythology mm-hmm. as the evil version of the TARDIS. Um, if you've gotten all the way through, because most people just binge it right away, you can't wait. Um, in episode four, um, Crowley pulls out his extremely big book of astronomy because he is looking for a planet to ride out the apocalypse. One of his choices is Gallifrey. So that's a fun Easter egg. And of course, at the beginning of episode four, um, there's a group of children and they shout, exterminate! while they are discussing what aliens would say if they visited Earth. So if you haven't checked out Good Omens yet, make sure that you do. Um, For those who don't know, and and I don't know who those people would be, but David Tennant is the demon Crowley. You're going to hate me. I'm going to be one of those people. And Crystal, here's the thing. I have not seen Good Omens yet, but thanks to all my Whovian friends and Facebook, I now know every single Easter egg that I am looking for when I eventually do watch this series. (laughs) That I've got every Easter egg cover. I said, Christian, did you see this? Christian, did you see that? Oh, Christian, it's over here. Oh, Christian, here's that. I'm like, oh, okay, well, <laughs> I'm not going to be looking for them. They've already set them up for me. So thanks, guys. Really spoiler about that. So, but uh, have you seen the series yet, Crystal? No, no, I haven't yet. I've uh, fallen behind on a few, as I, I tend to do in the spring when I've got more projects on. Uh, hmm. So I've got comedy projects and, and a few other writing projects and um, in the Earlier in the spring, I illustrated a children's book, so I, I've had a few, a few things, and and I'm falling behind on on all of the uh, really good TV that's that's come out right now. What else we got in the news, Sage? Well, this isn't necessarily news. This is rumor, but I thought I would pass it by, and everybody could have their take. So there was okay. a rumor that was floating around. It started on Twitter. Um, and it's about Billy Piper's return to Doctor Who, or at least that's what everybody wants it to be. No, I right? believe and, it. No, no, yeah, no, 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 not listening, not listening, not happening. That's it. So it she's been happen. floating around because that's how it started um, on there. And it said that, you know, maybe she's been in talks with Doctor Who and they had a leaked set photo that other people swear has Rose's name on it. So does anybody think that that could be possible at all? No, it turned right. out it was an announcement for an event. Yeah, it's it had nothing to do with Doctor Who. See, isn't that fun? But so that I was going around in the world. Rumor, or they like to let the rumor spread and and people to talk about who might come back or what might happen, and uh, nobody seems to come out and go, oh no 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 no, that's not what's going to happen. They just like to let it go because. You you want to hope maybe Rose comes back or maybe uh, River Song comes back, you know. Uh, I, I truly think that if you want to get the Whovian creative juices flowing and, and trying to get rally up the troops, all you have to say is, we're going to bring back X, the Postronauter gang, we're going to bring back Strax, we're going to bring back this, we're going to bring back Martha, and, and all I of like a sudden the Whovian, you'll see the Twitter, you'll see the Twitter and the hashtags going up there. <laughs> but speaking of hashtags, folks, we need to pay some bills, so stand by. And always continue to listen to us as we continue to become part of the legend. Famous Faces and Funnies in Melbourne, Florida is leading the way in pop culture fun. From comic books and graphic novels to Funko Pops and collector's items, Famous Faces and Funnies has it all. Rick Shea and the professional team at Famous Faces and Funnies are friendly and knowledgeable. Whether you're looking for toys, props, collector treasures, or a new comic book, Famous Faces and Funnies is your one-stop shop. To find Famous Faces and Funnies on Facebook and Twitter, just type at FFF Comics.
Who's who, what's hot and what's not? 2019 saw some amazing new creative talents, and now you can peek behind the scenes at the hottest indie creative artists in this year's edition of 25 Hottest Indie Authors, Artist Advocates 2019 Magazine. Published by the renowned And I Thought Ladies, this is a one-of-a-kind look into the brightest rising stars in the creative universe. Get yours today at magcloud.com and at andwethought.com. Mature and curvaceous Juliana faces the consequences of having two online lovers, the insanely jealous Aaron and the kind, sexy Silver Fox, Bobby. To make her life more complicated, she must weather the wrath of her husband Rocco, who has discovered his suspicion and uncovers a deep, dark secret. And there are more secrets to uncover. Will these secrets come out? Can Juliana survive the tsunami of impossible situations? Will she be able to rebuild the life she once had, or will the burden of the past prove too much? Is there even a happily ever after in her future? Read what happens when you pick up your copy of With All of Me Too today from joannesbooks.com or amazon.com. Authors, filmmakers, producers, anybody that has anything to do with creating independent stuff, comic book authors, musicians, make sure you take advantage of the 2019 Indie Originals Live Talent Competition going on now at www.indieoriginalslive.com. This is your exclusive opportunity to become an official award-winning independent creator to use that in your marketing. Enter today at www.indieoriginalslive.com. Are you looking for a used car? Check out the public auto auction app from CarAuctionNetwork.com. You can download the app on your phone or tablet and use it for free, and there's no registration required. You can see what's for sale at car auctions, such as bank repos, dealer trade-in, surplus government vehicles, or impounds. There are plenty of cheap used cars and trucks listed in the app. You can save a lot of money with the public auto auction app. You can also see and bid at car auctions online. Get the public auto auction app for iOS at the Apple Store. Or on Google Play. Or simply go to CarAuctionNetwork.com. That's CarAuctionNetwork.com. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Legend of the Traveling TARDIS. My name is Christian Basil. I am the pilot of my own TARDIS. And uh, you know what? I should have invited Nisha on the show. Then we could have had a Three Doctors episode. We could have had uh, Dr. Freedom, the Dr. Velocity, and she's an actual real doctor. So we can have a Three Doctors episode. And I'm just, just rattling on out here because I thought it was funny and that joke just really went south. Anyway, welcome there back, folks. <laughs> my name is Christian Basil. We're here with Dr. Freedom himself, Brian Barres. We're here with Mackenzie Floor, author. And now award-winning author. You are, you are a award-winning author, but now you're an award-winning, award-winning author. author, author. And yeah. <laughs> our special guest today is Dr. Who herself. Uh, you, If you haven't seen her videos as of yet, and she is having a new one, the fourth episode come out, Crystal Moore from Dr. Who Velocity. Welcome back, Crystal. And tell us about a little bit about Doctor Who Velocity and where the idea came from about, hey, we're going to be doing this. And one of the interesting stories I, I want to lead into is that you've done this zero, series with a zero budget. You're basically working off a PBS college fund budget. So <laughs> tell us a little bit about that. I'll, 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 I'll digress, but go for it. Uh, <laughs> please tell everybody about Doctor Who Velocity. That, that is uh, very true. So the, the first thought I had about it was uh, when Matt Smith announced, uh, you know, he was leaving the show when that announcement came out. I just had this uh, sort of comedic thought of all the different ways things would go if the next Doctor were a woman, or the different ways his own story would have gone, you know, just, it was kind of more of a sketch comedy that kind of popped up into my head about how differently things would turn out if the Doctor were female, um, mm-hmm. And that was funny, and I shared that with my partner, and I was like, "Oh, you know, I, I want to do this little, this little sketch comedy." And um, shortly after that, I, I, uh, we had, uh, we had our son Oliver, so uh-huh. that put a lot of production of many things on hold, um, but for the best reasons. And uh, when Capaldi announced he was leaving, I just. Oliver was was a baby, and, and you know, everything was was good with that, and and we were in a good place. And I, I told my partner, "It's time. Let's do it. Let's. It's we have to. It's. I just know it. I can feel it." And uh, I I started writing uh, ideas for the first episode, things I wanted to do. Uh, the witch trials was the first thing that came to mind. 
Um, yeah. And as I had these bullet points for it, um, my sister messaged me and said, did you hear, did you see the new, the announcement, who the Doctor Who is, is going to be? And I said, no, not yet. And she was like, oh, I won't ruin it for you. So I watched it. And I, in the same moment, just felt so, so much joy and like, you know, tear joy. Like, yes, this is happening. And also like, Oh, damn it. I was a little bit too late. I should have done this. I should have done this a couple years ago. And, and Chris was, oh, no, no, no. We'll, we'll, we'll go, uh, we'll do what the BBC can't do and, and make it just as like, you know, internet friendly, uh, Snapchat kind of vibe as possible. And, and so we just went in that complete direction. Um, in in crafting, I just want to also make one thing clear: the the hanging with web team is not being run by kids. Is that Oliver in the background that we're hearing? Right there? That, that is yes, that is Oliver. That is he woke up from his nap and uh, he oh. the little Daleks. And because I had one out here uh, I, on my desk, you guys saw him take yes. the Dalek that was in there. He any chance he has to play with that thing, he he will. He's over here going, let me, let me put, exterminate, exterminate. <laughs> let, let me put it this way. If you ever invite me to the house with you and Chris and you put a Doctor Who toy on the, you're not going to see it for a while. It's going to go all over the house. I'm going to go outside with it. I'm going to play with it for crying out loud. I have a traveling TARDIS that I've taken everywhere. So, oh. It's just playing. Is he like, Hello, Oliver. <laughs> oh. He's very good. So, um, so you got a little time tied. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I do. I do. Um, yeah. So that's Doctor. That's how the the whole thing sort of started. Doctor Who Velocity. Um, obviously, we're we're uh, trying to raise a family here. I have another daughter, um, who's who's eleven. So we're on a budget. <laughs> Everything we make is on a budget. Um, you know, that's one of the big things about it. But I think. When life gives you, or when, especially in art, when you have, um, you know, hurdles to overcome or things that you have to make it for or, you know, just challenges, it makes you better every time. So uh, I'm, I'm really happy with, with what we've produced on, on so little. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's right too. I love uh, I and uh, for folks who may not seen the series, I love the interior of the TARDIS because I do. I've always jokingly said one day, you know what, the Doctor one day is going to say, forget it, and just one day, just just vanish go, it all. Yeah, go with the basic. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, I I thought um, I like things to be very clean and very. I'm a little bit hospital corners myself. Um, so when we were, when we were talking about, you know, what we were going to do and, and what the aesthetic might be for that inside and, and realistically, what can we do? <laughs> Cause that's the biggest question. Um, what I could do was build, uh, props out of, out of foam board and things like that from my, uh, high school theater background. And, uh, I put that to good use and, and then there was a question of, okay, well, where do we put this? Um, thing that we've made and uh, the, the simplest um, thing to do really was, you know, a green screen or that white um, photo photo screen. So we did that and, and when you put it into the space of having uh, you know, nothing there, it just looked so cool all by itself and I just fell in love with this picture that Chris sent me. He had photoshopped, you know, with the TARDIS console in this big open white space. It was a little bit different the first one he sent, you know, he really refined it in the end. But I just was like, yes, this is this is exactly this is exactly what the inside of my parts would look like. I clean and crisp. I think we lost Chris. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I mean, I can keep talking about the TARDIS. <laughs> well, yeah, one thing I wanted to commend you, I, I love that console. It's just so simple, it's basic, but at the same time, it looks really good visually on the screen. I, I had to give you compliments on that. I really like the console. 
Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I thought oh, if we just simple, just as simple as possible would be better because then you know that makes a basically an, a blank canvas for Chris in After Effects to come in and work whatever magic he does. I don't know. I don't understand. It's like everything is is green screened or or you know we're in our living room. So what I see while we're filming is completely different. And and then he shows me what he's done, and I'm like, oh, wow, well that's look at that. We're look at where we're at now. That's neat. That's that's a whole that's a whole spaceship there. Look at that. Or that's a whole 16th century courtroom in England. Hmm. Did you know? <laughs> Adrian, now you just set up a green screen. And you can literally just be anywhere. Like you know, I've done a couple of videos where I'm inside a spaceship and all that, and. And if you hit it just right, you know, it's really, really cool. That's what I love about it. You don't need huge, vast, spacious studios anymore. You can just use your imagination and let it go crazy with just that screen. Yeah, if you if you work the lighting right, too, and you're very clever about what angles you're shooting, you know, so you know what you need to make in After Effects that seems to produce a better product. Because it can look, it can look pretty bad as well, but... He's he's so good, and it always shocks me. This next episode, I'm especially excited to see because it's the first one that I didn't write, All right, and Crystal? I didn't do any of the pre-production, yes? We are going to hear more about that and the pre-production right after we take this next commercial break and hear a little word from our sponsors. Time to pay some bills. Change your life with Reiki Distance Energy from Energy Right Now. What is Reiki? Well, Reiki Distance Energy is positive energy transferred over distance by Reiki Energy practitioners to help you heal and live your best life. How will Reiki help me? Reiki Energy transfers can help increase your income, better your health, help you lose weight, even stop smoking. It can be used to buy or sell real estate, even find lost items. Wow, Reiki Energy seems pretty powerful. It is, and you can start calling on Reiki Energy today. Just reach out to practitioner Leah Schiller online at energyrightnow.wordpress.com. Leah Schiller, where can I find her online again? Unlock your potential today with energy right now at energy right now dot wordpress dot com now on amazon dot com i coin from author jeremy mosby it's an alternate reality and the leader of the planet i coin is none other than benjamin franklin when corrupt officials threaten not only i coin but the earth as well an unlikely chosen one jeremy must face dark foes to save the earth and i coin alike author jeremy mosby takes readers on a superhero's adventure through this compelling and imaginative alternate universe get i coin on amazon.com today now on Amazon.com, War Crawls, Love Cries, a Civil War novel by Mark Berry. Isaac Wells is an innocent farm boy living in upstate New York. His dreams are shattered by a treacherous brother and the onset of a devastating civil war. War Calls and Love Cries is a fast-moving historical narrative. It is an emotional roller coaster ride and a riveting must-read book that you will think about and talk about for a long time to come. War Calls and Love Cries is the kind of book you will cherish for a lifetime on Amazon.com today. Hello, sweeties. I'm Crystal Moore. I play the Doctor in fan series Doctor Who Velocity. You're listening to The Legend of the Traveling Tardis Radio Show. Best-selling and award-winning author of true crime and crime fiction, Yvonne Mason is back with a brand new book, The Pink Canary, a book that delves into the life of a drag queen and a marvelous whodunit. You can find this and all of Yvonne's other works on Amazon.com or find Yvonne Mason on Facebook and Twitter. He's gonna kill me. Buy your copy of Pink Canary now. And hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Legend of the Traveling Tardis. My name is Christian Basil. What a great time for my computer to crash, so I'm doing the rest of this on phone right now. You gotta love the high-tech stuff and all that jazz, but um, I'm here with Mackenzie Floor for the Rite of Wands. I'm here with doc, uh, Dr. Freedom himself, Brian Barres, and I am here with Dr. Who Velocity's Crystal Moore. Crystal, I'm sorry, we, do, we we cut you off a little bit there, but if you want to keep going, uh, talking about what you were referring to before we went to commercial there, and before I had my uh, Yeah, no worries. It's, uh, it's an issue we battle on a daily basis, especially being uh, – there's one person doing all of the sound editing and uh, and after effects for for our things. So I, I'm well aware of technical issues and yeah. the frustration they cause. But um, yeah, th- this next episode, I, I was saying 
we're it's the first one that I I haven't written and I didn't do any pre production. So I didn't make a Turf Center console or a Daleks or anything like that. Um, I just had the pleasure of reading the script that Chris wrote, getting to the end and, and just loving it and then coming in and being an actor. So I'm I'm gonna be just as surprised as everyone else by what Chris makes, you know, in the in the end. I'm so excited to see this one because the story was so good. Now, what's the most challenging thing you've done on Doctor Who Velocity? Uh, Ooh, I stumped the Doctor. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got you now, Doctor. It's, what are you gonna do about personally, it? Personally, it's probably just juggling, you know, having a having a toddler and and trying to. <laughs> schedule everybody to a time and take care of a, a toddler. So it's that's the, the most uh, difficult part of the getting the whole project done. Is, oh, because if you look away, he finds chocolate, which is just what he did right now. That's what happened. Now talk about the fourth episode that's coming up here, and uh, you know, selfishly, I want some spoilers on there. But you tell us what you uh, tell us a little bit about the fourth episode coming up. It's taking place in 1989. It's going to be at Stonehenge, and um, really, I mean, I'm really intrigued at what's going to happen now with the Doctor. And she, and it looks like she's meeting a new, an old friend in the episode, at least from the trailer. So what I can tell you is. Uh, that, that Chris wanted to uh, write about the the sort of acid house dance scene in uh, in England, and when he went looking, um, you know, doing a little bit of research about that, and he found this whole Summer of Rave in 1989 uh, thing that happened at Stonehenge, which is a real you know event. And he thought, oh, this is just brilliant, uh, you know, mm-hmm. a brilliant in for exactly what we want to do. So it's uh. It's it's about the the acid scene or the acid house dance party scene, you know, at the time is about these house parties, these dance parties, but they were illegal and they were using pirate radio stations to advertise these these uh these dance parties. So the doctor finds herself at one of these dance parties, uh specifically the one uh, in nineteen eighty nine at Stonehenge. Um that that is what I can tell you, and uh, I'm I'm, ex- I'm so excited to see everybody's reaction for the for the whole thing because there are some some surprises, but spoilers, you know. Mm-hmm. So, what's the most proud thing that you've had come across for Doctor Velocity? What's your proud moment of of everything that's taken place so far? Oh wow. Um, you know the the whole thing all together, and how much I I actually liked the product at the end. I liked to watch it. How many other people liked to watch it? Um, th- that's probably the most proud thing for for me as an entertainer. Is you know, there's it's more than just me and my uh, my my mom, you know, <laughs> watching it. It's there, there's so many people that that appreciate it and. Um, that, that's that's what makes me proud as an entertainer. I got a quick question. Do you ever have moments where you feel like you're your own worst critic? <laughs> 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 that happens to me a lot because I do audio plays and I'm constantly sitting there before I even put it out. I'm like, oh god, did that sound right? Oh my god, did I? You know, I sometimes I can just get a little bit paranoid. Does that even happen a little bit to you? Oh my goodness. So I uh, I do um, literally have obsessive compulsive disorder. So literally all day, every day. I am constantly criticizing my myself. That is, um, interestingly enough, what that is. It's it's an excess of activity. Not to get like boring and scientific on you for a minute, but it's an excess of activity in the brain, uh, specifically in the part that scans for error, scans for conflict, problems to solve. So um, yes, I am always thinking about all of my problems and the problems of the world and the universe. I say that every episode that we do. I'm always like, damn, why did I say that? <laughs> why would I do that? Why did I, I do that? <laughs> so you're like me. You're you're your own worst critic. No, there, there, usually people um, 
Yeah, and I, can, I think I speak for also, like, Dr. Freedom. We have our little haters that come out there and go, you know what, you are, um, da, 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 da. And so that doesn't even bother me anymore because whatever you've said, I've said tenfold against me. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Like, Every criticism I've ever received or read or heard or been given to myself, I think, y- yeah, that, that <laughs> you are correct. That's, that's, uh, yeah. that's true, that's accurate criticism. I'll see what I can do about that. Uh, but I don't know what else uh Sorry, if we're defending you. Yeah, exactly. So that's all you can say. But people come up and go like, "Why did you say that?" I was like, "That was a really stupid joke." And I go, "Yeah, you're right." I'm it's, it's already recorded. It's already been played. So what are you gonna do about that? Yeah, I know the feeling because I've you know I've always said people go, "You blow, you stink, you blow," and I'm like, "But the way I look at it, if I even made like just five people's lives better or entertained them in some way, that to me has been more than enough, so more set more than satisfying." You know, sure, you know, the majority if you don't like it, but at least I made a few people happy and made their day a little better. Better. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, so, me too. I'm really it's curious about good. Davros, too, your creation of Davros. Oh, oh thank you. I, I like uh, Davros better because he had hair. <laughs> <laughs> and I like the echo of his voice, too. Yeah, you know, my, Scott did such a good job. I was so, so impressed. Um, it, it was so different night and day seeing him, you know, because we read through it several times before, and, and reading through it, it was like, I was getting a little bit nervous. This is my friend Scott, and he doesn't really feel like Davros, you know. And then, but uh, w- when I came in that day to shoot, and he had the makeup on, and he was in the chair, and he just, I, I genuinely had a, uh, I I forgot what the question. Oh, Davros. That's what uh, that's what we were talking about. I came in and I was really afraid in that moment. Just like oh, and he delivered. It was a sinister moment, and you brought the Daleks back too for another episode. Are they going to be coming back for this episode as well? No, no, not. Uh, they, they've been dealt with, I think, they've for the. Yeah, they were. I felt a, a good tool in story to uh, deal with some things that are, are, you know, that are happening right now in the world that we're that we're dealing with, uh, with technology, with social media, with the spread of information and. Yeah, the Daleks are just such a great metaphor for that. So I, I was excited to use the Daleks, and so was Chris. So, um, what other what what other issues do you think your Doctor is going to be tackling in future episodes? What, where do you see her going in like two or, or in a couple of years and new episodes that are coming up? So, going back to the previous question, what do you see the future for uh, your Doctor and Doctor Who Velocity? And what what um, what issues are you wanting to tackle? With your doctor. Well, oh, that's that's a good question. Um, I I really like Doctor Who because you can you can make almost any kind of story a Doctor Who story. Um, you know, just by inserting the Doctor in, and so you can go anywhere in time and space, literally, or. Uh, deal with anything. Um, so I, I really want to deal personally, um, you know, as an actor, there's a lot of things I want to play with, uh, as a woman, um, who, who is very used to having the authority of a man in the universe and, and not now, uh, because it's one part, you know, that authority you feel in yourself, but it, another part, how the world sees you and how you're treated um, by by others. Uh, so there's, there'll definitely be a little bit more of, of that kind of stuff, but I'd, I'd like to, I hope to, um, it's my goal to talk about those things in story in a way that is nuanced, that is, uh, you know, not not quite so divisive or on fire but but just real stories but you want to give you want to give a different take on on uh, because uh, of a different gender now there's a different perspective and you were the first one to hit the the the, the witch trials before Jody did and that's what I was thinking she's you know what would she be in, in different places where the doctor you know because of his gender he could take the authority but now that he's that he's a she you know, there's some places that don't accept the authority of a woman, but, you know, but, but the way your doctor handles things is just like, okay, you really, whatever, come on, you know, what difference does it make what I look like? It matters what the substance of what I'm saying to you. 
that's the important part, but they still don't want to listen. But I do love the approach that you've been taking uh, with your doctor, and I think that's I think that's really a moral to it. That sometimes we just don't look at the other side of things, and when we're giving a new perspective that we don't understand and see it through those eyes and the way that the doctor approaches it, I think that is a that's what I love about Doctor Velocity. We take it from her eyes, and she has fun with it. And she just walks into the room with authority and just like, yeah, this is it. This is me. And, you know, I'm telling you what, you know, there's a bomb about to blow up. I to, you know, you better take me serious. Thank you. That's, thank you. That means a lot. Um, yeah, I, I, I want to try to do that in a way that, um, you know, doesn't pour gasoline on any fire, but rather uh, quelches it, you know, so that there's ultimately just the purpose of storytelling really anyhow is to connect as humans and share those those human stories that that are are you know what drive us and i, I that's my goal in, in any storytelling and and doctor who's such a great facet for it because the doors are so wide open there's so many options and you know, making a, a character that's already established as being 2,000 plus years old as a male character with, with a great deal of authority in the universe, um, suddenly uh, a woman and a, and a small one <laughs> at that, I thought, you know, one, the juxtaposition is, is funny and that in and of itself sort of humanizes it, but, um, you know, you can maybe tell that that story uh in a in a in a bit nicer way or a, in a bit more accurate a way just being able to have that sort of you know man or not man man but masculine authoritative power that's already set that well of course I'm taken seriously I'm the doctor why would I not be um and and having to at points realize that that uh, I you know I see that there'll be there'll be episodes where the doctor realizes that um, that she does not she does not quite get uh, get out of it because because of that or she gets into trouble like the like the witches but um, you know maybe expand on that a little bit more. So that there's a, a real personal understanding, um, I think, from the from that two thousand years as a male perspective, that oh wow, that this struggle is different, this equal, <laughs> but different. It's different, and the perspective is different. You're treated differently. There's a lot of things that you just don't know until you know. That's true, but I think that struggle goes through. I mean, a couple of my favorite doctors were small doctors, McCoy and Troughton. And they kind of had that same issue because they would walk into a room and say, listen, something bad's going to happen. You need to listen to me. And some people wouldn't listen. Just like, okay, well, you're going to get screwed by your own folly. And I see your doctors the same way. I think it transcends for all the doctors, but it does come up with a different perspective of you. But I'm just going to be rattling on because Sage is kicking me saying, we need to go to a commercial break and get some bills paid. When we come back, we're going to wrap up our interview with Crystal Moore at Dr. Who Velocity when we continue to become part of the legend. The Right of Wands. One boy, one right. And a world of deadly secrets that could change the course of history forever. It's time for The Right of Wands by Mackenzie Floor. When a horrible fate reveals itself during the Right of Wands ceremony, Mira must find a way to change his destiny. Forbidden from revealing the future, he is granted a wand and magical powers in order to save himself and those he loves. But Mirda is not the only one with secrets. The Right of Wands by Mackenzie Floor. Available on Amazon.com now. From authors Julie Morgan and Grayson Miller, and out of the great city of New Orleans emerges a detective tale to devour. The king of New Orleans is a demon who offers immortality for loyalty. The sheriff is a shifter with a badge who's lost his powers, and Natalia Cortez is the private dick who arrives to investigate a demonic killing. The rest is waiting to be uncovered by you. This dick is looking for a demon fuck. Pre-order on Amazon.com today. Discarded by Michael J. Allen, in a world where magic is sold like designer coffee, 
unknown forces have corrupted it, and it's killing people. Now, an unlikely hero emerges. A homeless ex-con creating spells out of a trash can is the only one who can save the city. Michael J. Allen's Discarded, available on Amazon.com. Every year, tens of millions of people flock to Florida for its sunny beaches and world-famous tourist attractions. Most never learn about the strange and unusual locations just off the beaten path. From the UFOs of Gulf Breeze to Robert the Haunted Doll in Key West, learn about the myths, monsters, and legends from the dark side of the Sunshine State with author Mark Muncy and illustrator Carrie Schultz in their books, Eerie Florida and Freaky Florida from the History Press. Find them at eerieflorida.com or wherever books are sold. This is Cosplay Michael with the Hanging Us Up show. I want to tell you about my friends at Embellus Effects in Orlando, Florida. They've got makeup, costumes, and props for all of your costume needs. And the team at Embellus Effects is helpful and friendly. Embellus Effects is one of my favorite places, and I know it will be yours too. I'll see you there. Work out on EmbellusEffects.com. And remember, Cosplay is for everyone. Murder by the Gods from author William G. Collins is available today. Murder by the Gods is a mystery thriller set in the glorious past of ancient Egypt. When the son of the Scorpion King suddenly collapses after receiving a mysterious threat from the god Seth, the prince is convinced it is the gods who are trying to kill his family. Murder by the Gods is filled with adventure and romance in a kingdom that would become known as the Land of the Pharaohs. Murder by the Gods from author William G. Collins is available on Amazon.com today. Go! And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to The Legend of the Traveling Tardis. We're in the final segment, the final round, and we're welcoming back Crystal Moore from Doctor Who Velocity, our special interview with her. Uh, again, joining me is Brian Barres, uh, Doctor Freedom, and Mackenzie Floor, the Rite of Wands. Crystal, I think I asked this, but I, I think I want to go into further. Where do you see your doctor going in five years? Uh, Where do you see the production going in five in five to ten years? What, what would you like to ultimately see happen to Doctor Who Velocity? Well, you know we're we're real happy doing these short episodes. Uh, it's been a a great sort of exercise of of our skills together. It has been, and I hope that for the next five years it continues to be. Um, you know, some really good building of, of how we work together and, and what we can produce. And, and ultimately, I you know, I, the two of us both hope to produce lots of other things. Um, I, th- I think this will probably always be our our little baby, our little uh, YouTube uh Princess, and, uh, <laughs> that little Dalek. Uh, you can, you know, you can do anything with, and uh, it's it's not something you know you can you can realistically do anything big with because it uh, it's technically owned by the BBC. Um, so it'll it'll always be a fun project for us, but the the story and what I hope to be able to do with that character is uh, you know i I just I'm interested in those sort of doctor those classic doctor who um, archetypes of stories and, and situations and villains, but from the perspective of a female and how that, you know, what that comes out differently as and how that's taken differently by the villain or the companion or, you know, whoever it is. Um, that's what I, I hope to to do with it in the next five years. And I don't know, maybe I'll be the longest running, oldest doctor <laughs> on, on YouTube in my 80s still with my bowler hat rocking it, but... Uh, it's, you know, we love it, and it's the, the little fun pageant, passion project for us, but also, um, you know, a lot of hard work, and we get to hone some interesting niche skills with with this project. Yeah. Well, I, I, I jokingly laugh because I think um, David Tennant said if he didn't quit at the time he would 
if he didn't quit at the time he quit, he was going to be in a walker that <laughs> says the doctor. <laughs> and he's going to like be the 50th year. He'd be the uh, 100th uh, year episode. And, uh, um, Chris, I wish you the best of everything. I wish you break, um, what, what, what my friend says, break a leg at everything that you do there. But by the way, you do stand up comedy. Am I right? Did I get that right? I do. I do. I, um, yeah, it's definitely not for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> I pull off a lot of steam at an open mic, and also uh, produce a a comedy show called the Jack Mormon Comedy Hour, uh-huh. uh, which is entirely ex Mormon comedians uh, giving you know doing our sort of Mormon material. It only can you guys hear that? Oh, absolutely. Are you as entertaining and as I am? Fantastic. Oh, we come back from commercial break. Chris will have one child less in the world. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know you're crying. It's really scares me right now because if you did add sugar to this kid, I would be very, very intrigued on what would happen. I'd be scared. <laughs> Do you? Would it make you feel better if you were sitting here? Would it make you feel? Would it make you feel better if you were sitting up here? Oh, you're talking to him, not me. I don't know. I can't. Talk. <laughs> oh. <laughs> For those of you guys who can't see me, I, I had to pick him up. Right, He's got I'm a doll like he's now. Look at that. That's how you know he was faking right there. Look at that half yeah. three face. He's totally fine. He's not being tortured. <laughs> now totally you have a, I think you, you, if I mentioned correctly, if I read something right, you, you work with a local com, uh, local theater troupe, correct? Um, yeah, there was a, I, it actually started as a, um, just an acting class. Uh, but she, because she has this whole group of actors, ends up with a lot of people coming to, to her, uh, to get actors in, involved in things. Um, so it feels kind of like a, like a local thing troupe because it's, we all are in the same acting class and so, um, and then we all end up in a lot of the same things. <laughs> oh. I think we're all quiet because we're just waiting for the kid to say something. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Christian, you half your episode is a screaming kid. What gives? And I said, yeah, we had Daleks on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Daleks are unruly. They are like uh, toddlers, angry toddlers in many ways. What kind of projects do you have coming up personally, aside from Doctor Doctor uh, Doctor Velocity? Uh, I have a Jack Mormon comedy hour in Boise in October, uh-huh. um, so that one I'm really excited about. And then I've I've got a, a few road gigs that I'm gonna go do uh, in hopes of getting that Jack Mormon comedy hour booked. Um, you know, bring a few other comedians along. It's a it's a good time. It's a good fun time. <laughs> Brian, did you have something to ask uh, Crystal? Uh, yeah, you already covered it. I was going to ask, you know, where to get all the extra actors and all that, you know, oh. the cast. So. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just doing questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying myself. So. <laughs> are we entertaining the audience or are we being entertained? I think we're being entertained. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, I find in the podcast that uh, if the people are entertained themselves, then the podcast is more entertaining. That is true. That is, that is true. And one of the great things I love talking about here is I can talk about stuff. Yeah, about the stuff that we don't normally uh, talk about in other podcasts. I love talking about stuff that I haven't heard on other podcasts. A lot of them are reviewing stuff, and I love our team because with the original stuff. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm breaking down. <laughs> <laughs> Completely lost. I had a train of thought, and it just derailed, ran into another train, into another train, into another yard, into another train. 
<laughs> so um, well, there's a sci-fi episode in there, a thought taker, some sort of alien device that takes thoughts from your head. Mm-hmm. You always thought, oh, you're you just lost your train of thought, but they're being taken. Like, oh, they? great. <laughs> Okay. No, I, was, um, I was breaking up because I, I just thought that would be a perfect time to play the clip of Capaldi going, you're all the same, you screaming kid. You know that? <laughs> <laughs> and at that time, you were thinking that. My fat John came up here and he's like, ah! Ah! I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was like, oh, I was I we could be picked up on the mic. <laughs> he just right. screamed just like a toddler. <laughs> What do you love most about Doctor Who itself, the show, Crystal? I like how I like how the 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 character just as a I'm a bit of a nerd on on story writing and storytelling and archetypes and these sorts of things, and I I, I love that that sort of he's sort of that like guru, teacher, mystical character, right, that you don't really know, and and he can take anyone from anywhere out of where they're at, out of their their shoes, their perspective, their life, and put them anywhere mm-hmm. and show them something else. And, and every time, you know, especially in the Better Written episodes, that companion or that character, you know, the, the person that you as the audience be following, um, experiences some sort of growth or shift in their perspective where um, they learn something just, just through that experience or they grow where they're, they're stronger themselves. It's such a... You can, you can just do so much with it, and that's what I love about, about it. It's just such a brilliant use of sci-fi and the guru, mystical, teacher character uh, especially when it's when it's done right, when it's written well, it's like money. There you go. All right, well, we're coming to the end of the show there, and I did have one question to ask you because Sage is also kicking me as well. Um, and normally I don't like doing this. It's almost actor studio. Well, I am stealing from the actor studio just a little bit because that should drive me insane. But I'm going to give your doctor a platform for one minute. I want. I'm calling on Doctor Who Velocity, your doctor. If there was, and you have the platforms of iHeartRadio, iTunes, Krypton Radio. What is a message that you want to tell everyone out there from your doctor? Oh, no pressure. I would say, for me and for my doctor. Um, we're all we're all people, and we're not so different as different as we may be. And and humans all need and desire and yearn for the same things. And and when we can see ourselves in in other people, um, we can be kinder and softer. And and that always that always grows something more beautiful than than finding a thing or trying to control a thing or um, hating it or, or cutting it out or just not paying attention to it. You know, I, I would say along the lines of that hope of the doctor that, that I love so much is, is that I, I hope Humanity is kinder to itself, to each other. That's that's my minute spiel. That's fine. Well, no, I, I, I really love that spiel because it really does. It reminded me back of the way that the, um, the Tenth Doctor would see like a blob or like a mess on the floor and everybody would see ugliness or disgust or anything like that, but the Doctor would look at, oh, this is beautiful. This is gorgeous. Look at this. This is this is this is great. And I think that what I've seen from the three episodes I've seen, that is a great representation of your doctor. When she looks at things, she looks at things as everything is beautiful until she sees the ugliness that comes out of that. And that's when she takes a stand. If I'm not mistaken, am I interpreting that right? Yeah, I, I think 
I think even uh, in the ugliness there is beauty, and part of life is accepting that both of those things exist. It's not um, one or the other. I, I am beautiful and ugly in many ways, um, and that's okay, and we all are. And it, that doesn't mean that there's not a time to say, hey, that's too ugly, and you need to stop because it's hurting other people. You know? Right. Uh, <laughs> Subtle hint. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, don't get it. Who, those of you who are listening to us on the radio, um, Sage is pointing time to wrap up. That's how we do things around here. So, Crystal, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you and appreciate uh, appreciate the show that you're doing there. Um, where can they find you? Um, where's your web presence at? Where can people find you? Of course, YouTube. Just look up Dr. Velocity. But where else can they find you? We have an Instagram, we have a Facebook, we have a Twitter, we have a Snapchat that I'm not on as much as I should be because I'm 35, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not 22. I don't have Snapchat parties frequently as the kids do. But we do have one. It's Dr. Who Velocity uh, at any one of those. And some of them are Dr. D.R. Who Velocity. Some of them are Dr. Spelled Out, depending on how many characters they allow. No, that's fine. Don't, don't, don't even worry about that. At one point, I think I like had eight social media platforms, and then I, I got to the point where I need to consolidate. Where am I really at? <laughs> but does anybody go on MySpace anymore? <laughs> so I had to get rid of those. those <laughs> so I'm at, do I really need this? I'm at, who really follows me on Snapchat? Uh, you know, stuff like that there. But I digress. Um, I want to thank my panelists, uh, uh, Brian Barres, Dr. Freedom, uh, uh, Mackenzie Floor, author of The Right of Wands, and I want to thank the Hanging With team. Sage, speaking of which, where uh, we've always given a nice little, uh, the Hanging With team, uh, they're in the music spotlight. Check that out. Every Thursday night, um, they have music from indie artists from all over the place, um, including if you've been uh, lucky enough, you've been hearing um, Tim Russ, who played Tuvok on Star Trek Voyager. Um, just some beautiful music, and we are actually in talks with a fellow star from Doctor Who who may be adding her music to the contribution for the Indie Music Spotlight. But, Sage, who's going to be um, going to be our guest for tonight? Who's playing tonight? Tonight's guest is the Bloody Jug Band, and they will be performing Jezebelion. I think I totally stomped them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my favorites. Oh, it's my guys. Um... I have a couple friends who are in a band called the Bloody Jug Band down here in Orlando, Florida. you got to check them out on YouTube. Um, they've got the music all out there. One of my favorites is Chain to the Bottom, which I play on the, on a Halloween special uh, every time, uh, every Halloween on the Religion of the Traveling Tardis. Folks, again, please check out Dr. Who Velocity. Um, and if you want, uh, check us out on our Facebook page, give us a like. Check us out on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Krypton Radio. Um, and as always, continue to listen. Thank you for joining us, and always become part of the bro- part of the legend. And I just tripped over that. <laughs> so, so, hanging with team, go ahead and take us out. I shot him down like a dog in the street. Into my gun, the only CB will mean. There'll be no resurrection this time around, my lord. When a sin seen body hits the cold, damn floor, the wrap a rope around my neck. For what I have done, a cold, dead morning shows a blood red sun. Close my eyes, to hide me from this hell. Nothing can save you when you took my chance of I stumbled down to the bayou last night When I came to the clearing, something wasn't right right. Two hundred deputies on the line Looking down at the muddy blueprint Looked just like mine, the wrapper rope around my neck For what I have done A cold, dead morning shows a blood red sun Cloak my eyes to hide from this hell Nothing can save you when you took my tears of beer so here I stand on my final day. The marshals came to grab me and they took my ass away. Confess to the rich and the poor for your crimes. If I had another pistol, I'd have shot him six more times with a rifle. 
from this hill. Now I lay beside my beloved Jezebel. Now I can walk around my neck for what I have done. A cold, dead morning shows a bright red sun. My Jezebel. Oh, my eyes to hide me from this hill. My Jezebel. Now 